big business people monopolize wealth and power in society. As a simple example, to have decent housing in South Africa, we would have to spend billions of rand. We would have to redirect the construction industry away from producing shopping malls, suburban houses, gentrified coffee shops and craft beer saloons. We would have to move that money and we would have to have the power to decide that those resources go into housing. And I don't just mean a little pondoki, I don't just mean a tiny two-room house, I'm talking about decent housing for ordinary people. Where you can live in dignity, where you can live, where essentially we abolish the township system. That we break that down, we don't create a bigger township, we create the end of the townships. We make the township suburbs. Now that requires a massive redistribution of wealth and power, and you will never get that by putting a piece of paper in a box every five years and hoping some politician will carry out their promises. Comrade here was quite clear, we've tried, and we're not the only ones who've tried, many, many people have tried this. People much better than me have tried. If someone like Nelson Mandela couldn't change the system, if somebody Vladimir Lenin, anyone you want to name, ended up reproducing that same inequality in society. Why is it going to be different this time? How many more times do we have to crash the car before we realize it needs brakes? You cannot make a car fly. It's the nature of the thing. You cannot, with the best will in the world, make a dog go meow. And you cannot take a state which has got a very specific purpose in society and make it do something different. I understand the comrade saying, we want to use it to make propaganda, and I think there maybe we agree. The nature of the state is twofold. One, it is about the defense of inequality in society. Adam Smith, the famous liberal economist, said the wealthy, and he's later grandfather, great, great grandfather of neoliberalism, said the wealthy could not sleep peacefully at night unless there was an armed body which could protect them. The state role is to maintain the status quo. Secondly, the state serves and is controlled directly by that ruling class. And the ruling class is not just capitalists in the private sector. The ruling class includes those people who control the army, the police, the parliamentarians, the mayors, the vice chancellors. Those are all part of the ruling class. And they have some disagreements. How much tax must this one pay to this one? Who gets a contract from ESCOM? But fundamentally, they're in it together. And you can see it easily, as Lumsa guys will know, when you go on strike, where is the political party that calls for the bosses to be arrested? For the right police to go into the boardroom? All of them agree on that. All those differences fall aside when it comes to the basic thing. If you want to occupy some land for a shack, you're going to face evictions, beatings, jail. Now you could be like Marcus Joester, and you could defraud pensioners, pensioners of nearly 40 billion rand and then you can go speak in parliament for an hour and go back to your horse racing and your stables and your mansion. You can loot ESCOM so that South Africa now has less power than it did in 2009 and you will be in a commission. Wow, that's tough. That's tough. You can go and strike at a mine, you will not get paid every day, you will be beaten by police, you will be killed in some cases, but if you steal billions you will talk to a commission. That is what the state's about. So in two ways, on the one side, directly the state is an instrument of accumulation of wealth and power. That is the reason the major political parties run in elections. They need access to the PIC, to ESCOM, to municipal contracts all the way down. An average municipality has 1,000 contracts to the private sector. If you can give that contract to your friends, then you're sorted. At the same time, simply by maintaining the status quo of inequality of powerful monopoly corporations, you are ensuring the current system goes. So what does this mean? Votes are not going to change the system. Voting will not change the system. It's not an issue of whether comrades are using it as a tactic or not. It's an issue that major decisions are completely outside of the control of ordinary people on a day-to-day -day basis. Parliament is not democracy. It is better to be under a parliament than under P.W. Berta, but parliament is not democracy. It's a shell. It's a fraud. If you look at what we look at on TV, watching the shenanigans of overpaid politicians earn a million rand a year, wearing overalls or wearing Gucci suits, I don't care which. Those are rich, powerful people. 
who are there for themselves. They are not there for you. At elections, they'll talk to you. But you can see sooner or later what happens. We never voted for privatization in 94. We got that. We never voted for police to be sent on our campuses. We've got that since 1994. And this isn't a question of which particular party. I want to be very clear. This is not a question of ANC or DA or EFF or whatever other party. The DA evicts people and the ANC complains. The ANC evicts people, the DA complains. <laughs> EFF, well, it will evict people if it controlled a municipality, but remember it did work with the DA when the DA was evicting people. It's not a question of which party. We need to get away from the thing that the problem is a few bad apples, a few bad people, that we solve it if we replace Mbeki with Zuma, and we solve it when we replace Zuma with Ramaphosa or Malema or my money. It does not matter. Okay? It does not matter. So what we need to be thinking instead, this is where I think the thing of the tactic is a mistake. Why tell people, yes, the masses do look at elections, but why not give them a different message at elections? Yes, the political temperature of the working class has risen at elections, but why give them the message, vote? That is creating illusions in the state. That is creating illusion. Yes, Kermit, I recognize the Socialist Revolutionary <laughs> Workers' Party wants a dictatorship of the proletariat and so on and so forth, but most people who vote that are thinking you guys will be delivering houses and hoping you do a better job. We are creating illusions in that state. We are creating illusions. Yes, you can use Parliament for propaganda. If it showed it brilliantly, brilliantly, they made Parliament interesting to watch. In the old days, it wasn't interesting to watch unless you were having trouble sleeping and you could take tips from the people in Parliament. <laughs> but fundamentally, this is a method which sows illusions. If you have a child and they burn their hand, you don't say, burn your hand so you can learn the lesson. You say, don't burn your hand. The same thing with elections. Okay. Now, what I would like to suggest here, and I, I know time is, is, is running out there, is two things. First, political parties don't change the state. The state changes political parties. People change. I can give anyone here a million bucks a year. You will change. You will change. Give you five million bucks and a government contract for your auntie. You will change. So rather than political parties being the power of the people inside the state, they actually become the power of the state into the working class, creating networks of patronage, elevators and lifts for people to move out of the working class into the elite. They create a culture of dependency on the state. We want the state to deliver. We want this. People used to call job on making, Mr. Delivery. That's the whole problem. People are left passive. People are disempowered from the decisions, from their daily lives, and they are taught to put their faith in messiahs. It's a Moses syndrome. We're waiting for Moses to lead us into the land of Canaan. It's not going to do it, and none of these guys are Moses. None of these guys are Moses. What we need, I think, instead is, a, is an idea that if no state can really make a difference, and I include the so-called socialist states, if no state has really put the working class, the poor, the peasants in power, then we need to think of a way that ordinary people can take power without the state. We need a politics at a distance from the state. We need to build organs of people's power and of workers' control that can, in the current period, resist the ruling class. That can fight, but that are ultimately developing the capacity to take over things themselves. So, with Comrade Modisi, and we've had this discussion before, I think it's for me, why does NUMSA want to put its faith in a party? Why doesn't NUMSA prepare its members to seize and occupy and run the metal industry? You have 350,000 people, you have structures of workers' control. Expand the democracy, expand the democracy from your structures. In the 1980s, we had an idea from ungovernability to people's power, where people, civic organizations that were used to fight apartheid black local authorities started to take power in townships. We had an idea in the old unions, Fosatu, early Fosatu, that worker control of the union should be expanded into worker control of the economy. I think we should get back to that. Now, it just, I'm aware of time here. What we have to do is organize and educate people. And that means organizing people bottom up to struggle, bottom up to empower their daily lives, bottom up so they can actually have democracy. You will not get democracy through the state, but you can get it with your neighbors. You can get it with your workmates. 
and you can build in that the seed of a democracy where people redistribute wealth and power downwards. That's exactly what I mean. A society based on assemblies, community and worker councils that can plan the economy democratically. Now, nearly done here. Fundamentally, to sum up, you're not going to change the system with a piece of paper. If you want to vote, vote. Go for it. Let a thousand flowers bloom. If people want to set up a party, good for them. And I respect the Socialist Revolution Workers' Party for at least being a party of principle. It's not an ATM. It's not people who are thrown out of ANC or EFF looking for a job. But I still think the issue is it's not going to solve the problems. Secondly, in rejecting the vote is not rejecting democracy. It's a fight for democracy. Parliament is not democracy. If you want democracy, you need to build it outside the state. Outside the state. The state is part of the problem. The problem is not the capitalist and the state will sort them out. They're the same thing. Thank you.